He's Brian Regan back in the man cave. Been doing stand-up comedy for how many years? How many decades? Uh, I don't know. You 30? Three, three or four decades. Yeah? Good for you. Many decades. When did you decide to become a comedian? I was in college. I, um, I took a speech class, and uh, I, I used to try to make my speeches funny. And one time I did okay. I got the class laughing, you know, 25 kids in the class. And I got the teacher laughing. Ooh. This woman sitting in the back howling. And uh, I'm like, I've never impressed a teacher with anything in my life. And I remember walking back to the dorm after that speech class, and something had happened in my head. Like, I remember thinking. It's a drug, though. Well, I remember thinking, I don't feel like this when I walk back from biology class. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Like, like something got in me where it's like, whatever that was, I need, I need more of that. But what do you, okay, what's your next move? Who do you tell where you go, I think I want to be a comedian? It's a weird thing, man. You know, uh, I didn't really tell anybody. I mean, I told a couple of close but friends. But you don't go home and tell mom and dad. No. No, no, that's... They probably uh, wouldn't be thrilled that <laughs> right. you're going to college and I want to be a comedian. Yeah, yeah no, that's a, that's a big call to mom and dad. Um, no, I just kind of kept it to myself. I told some, some close friends and, you know. But when you hear that laugh, I mean, there's nothing, there's no other sound like that, it feels like that. To a comedian, hearing that... Yeah, Fritzy and I, we were talking about how... Yeah, but Fritzy uh, we doesn't hear it. Fritzy doesn't hear that. That's, why, that's why we brought Brian on to explain what that feels like, because I may never know what that is. Uh, let no, me, I heard you had a good set. What, uh, in Minneapolis, what, yes. at the Super Bowl. So, uh, Have you played Caroline's? Of course. Okay. Yeah, Caroline's many times in New York City, legendary club. But how, how many years into the business before you got to Caroline's? Uh, it, it took a while. Yeah. So yeah, Fritzy to, was six weeks. <laughs> everything is all topsy turvy, man. Uh, Timing is everything. <laughs> all right. So let me give the full introduction. Uh, you can see Brian Regan, uh, around the country. You can go to his website, Brian Regan. That's R E G A N.com. And, uh, his comedy tour. He's also, uh, his role of Muggsy in the second season of Loudermilk, uh, Tuesdays at 10 Eastern and Pacific on the audience network. So he's an actor. And check out uh, him, uh, his stand-up dates. Uh, you can go to his website for that as well. All right. Uh, where are you touring now? So uh, Connecticut, I know. Yeah, I have, uh, I think, Stamford, Connecticut tonight. Torrington, Connecticut tomorrow night. Albany, Saturday. And uh, Burlington, Vermont on Sunday. Do you adjust your act in accordance to what part of the country you're in? Not that much. No, I just kind of do what I do. Um, but I do notice there are... Uh, Shorter fuses in the audience in the Northeast, you know, like uh, if you perform like in Minneapolis or something like that, you know, the, the crowds are very appreciative. They're, they're looking at you like, we're, we're just happy you're here, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you make them laugh on top of it, it's gravy. But if you perform like in Boston or Philadelphia or New York, no patience, they can, they are great audiences, but short fuse like you better you better get your foot in the door quick because if you don't get them laughing quick they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna turn on you and, and they're gonna let you know i know that i brought this up before to you and i meant it as a compliment but i could see where it feels like the label is brian regan he doesn't go blue he has it your your stand-up act and my kids are the ones who told me about you and you go and you can take your family there and it's not like it's watered down it's just smarter humor where you just don't use curse words but are, are you bothered by the label of hey brian he doesn't use curse words it it's a double-edged sword you know I, sometimes i wonder if it keeps more people away <laughs> seriously <laughs> no, than I it wondered. brings in yeah i wondered that it's like a g rating on a movie sometimes a movie doesn't want a g rating because people go ah, i don't want to go see that yeah it's sort of like that with comedy. I, I think if people don't know anything about me and hear, oh, he's a clean comedian, people might go, ah, I don't want to go see that guy. Whereas if they went and saw me, they hopefully would laugh and not even think one way or the other about whether it's clean. You know? And plus, you know, you're becoming this big star. You're you, uh, comedians in cars with uh, uh, Seinfeld. Right. Right? Yeah. So you not only one episode, you've done two episodes? I was in the first 10 that he made before any of them were on the internet. Yeah. And then he asked me if I wanted to do a second one. 
So, what's your relationship with Seinfeld? We're uh, we're lovers. Are you okay? We're <laughs> I, I, I get that. This just in: Brian Regan <laughs> as a boyfriend and Jerry Seinfeld. No, man, we, we're uh, comedy friends. Okay, you know, uh, it's always a weird thing to like. I, I never want to act like I'm. You know, we don't go to Central Park and fly kites together. You know, but uh, we're friends in the comedy world. He but saw you- me years ago when I, before he had his TV show, he uh, he saw me do a set, and he was huge in the comedy world, but he hadn't had he wasn't on a sitcom yet, and he saw me do a set in New York and said some good things to me, and uh, so since then, you know, so I've opened for him in some theaters around the country and stuff like that, and uh, you know. What about and then Letterman? You were on. How many times? 25 times? 28. 28 times on Letterman. Very, well, very fortunate. Okay. How did Letterman find you? Well, you have to audition. You know, I mean, I auditioned, not for him, but for like a, a show producer, you know, and uh, I had auditioned a, a few times and not gotten it. And then you audition and then they go, yeah, we think, we think it'll work out. Wait, wait, you go in prior to... The show or in a how comedy far club. Inv- oh, okay. You know, you go in a comedy club. You don't go on a showcase, which means like uh, the a producer will come out and watch five, six comedians who might be. But you know that they're coming out oh, yeah. for you to audition for Letterman. Correct. And then uh, you do it. You wait to see if there's a phone call the next day. And uh, what was that first appearance like? Oh my gosh, I, it, it, it's hard to explain the. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about more nervous with with Fritzy Fritzy than giving out a Super Bowl trophy. The nerves when you're it was very funny when you're backstage before a show like that. It's it's pretty intense, but that's part of the fun to me. It's like you know a, a any golfer can make a four foot putt, but can you make it when you need to win the U.S. Open? It's sort of like that with comedy. It's like well, a lot of people can be funny, but can you be cu- funny when this curtain opens and you got to walk out? and there's cameras and the whole thing, can you do it then? Do you remember, are you, I don't know if you're telling a joke, listening for the audience, but you also want to hear if Letterman laughs. Are you aware of that? Yes, because, well, he has a distinct cackle, if you will. He has this unusual way of laughing. And uh, there are are times when you're out there doing stand-up, and you'll hear him, like, go, (laughs) he's got this... (laughs) Yeah. And you almost want to you almost want to stop. You almost want to stop and yeah. go I don't care about any of you. I I I care about that, you know, but you can't stop. Uh he's Brian Regan, stand-up comedian and he is uh you can uh, see him in the role of Muggsy that season 2 of Loudermilk on audience at uh, channel 239 on Direct TV. How do you deal with hecklers? I'm not good at it. I uh I'm not good at dealing with them. I don't have any go-to lines. If somebody heckles me, I'm thrown. You would think this far into the into my career, I'd have some surefire comeback. One time I was on stage, and uh, I got heckled. And I was like, uh, you know, I just dealt with it the best way I could. I got off stage, and the other comedians were mocking me. They were mocking my response. They said, <laughs> they said, Please stop. You're <laughs> you're hurting my feelings. <laughs> that was my comeback. Wow. That's that sharp wit. Yeah. Please stop. You're hurting my feelings. Man, that's a zinger. <laughs> that, I think Lenny Bruce used that too one time. The guy stopped. He's like, I don't want to hurt this guy's feelings. You know? So. I, I mentioned that uh, I got an email from do you know Mark Ridgely? I do know Mark. Okay, so so he sold you out. He said, ask Brian about playing wide receiver at Heidelberg College. Yes. Got your butt kicked. Team was 0-27. Hey. You guys never won a game. No, that's not true. We were, uh, the Ohio Athletic Conference has a blue division and a red division, at least it used to when I was there. And one season, we were 0-8. But the playoffs were the first place team plays the first place team. Second place, second, third place, third, all the way down. So the last place team played the last place team for some reason. Okay. So we went to a playoff game. <laughs> I don't even know why they call it that. We were 0-8, and, and we go, we played a, the worst team in the other division, and we beat them. 
and we were coming back on the bus, like all confused as how we were supposed to feel. You know, we're not dead last. We're not dead last. Um, yeah, we, we weren't great. But I'm glad I went there because I was able to play. I mean, I had friends that went to Notre Dame uh, and played football. I was from a really good high school football team. We sent like uh, 13 guys to college. And a lot of them went to major colleges. But, you know, a lot of them weren't able to play as much as I was able to play at Heidelberg. Your nickname was Rip? Rip. Because I slept all the time. Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> you have a bit that we... I was never in class. I was always sleeping. Uh, uh, you have a bit where it, the post-game press conference? Yeah. Th th this blew up with sports fans. Didn't you do this on Fallon? Yes. Okay. Um, can you, uh, can you it, well, reprise I, that I, a little bit? I, I hate the post-game press conferences because... And they're starting to learn, but for the most part, they do not mic the question askers. Yeah. And it drives me crazy. You see the coach or the athlete sitting at the table, and you're watching this. Uh, that was a coaching decision. <laughs> Uh, three, maybe four. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? I thought you were going to say yes. <laughs> or no. You're right. They, they should mic them. Uh, I do want to get your expert uh, opinion on this. Now, this is Fritzy's opening joke. So first words out of his mouth mm -hmm. at Caroline. So the great Brian Regan is going to address this. Packed so house at Caroline's. So I'm at a sporting event the other night, and at least three different people come over to me asking if I'm sitting in their seats. So I don't know if, it's, uh, if you guys ever deal with this, if you go to a concert, a sporting event. How difficult is to find seats at a concert or a sporting event. Think about it. It's got all the information you need right there on the ticket. Section, row, seat number. Section, row, seat number. It's really, really not that complicated. I got these people coming over to me and saying, I think we're in the same seat. Not only are they not in my seats, they're all the way on the other side of the arena. They couldn't <laughs> have been further from where I'm at. So I don't understand. Section, row, seat. Let's, uh, let's get it together. Just uh, some people I just can't deal with. Okay. <laughs> That's not bad. Okay. I, I think that's funny. Mm -hmm. But but hitting it a little too hard at the end. Like, you know. But uh, it, good, good, it, uh, good premise. It, David Spade said it was a good setup. Yeah. Like, you can have observational humor without humor, and that's what it felt like. It was just sort of, <laughs> like, it was missing something at the very end. It was just observational. Yeah. Yeah, there was no punchline. <laughs> or comedy. Um, Plus, he doesn't address the audience, Brian. I, yeah, I didn't do that. He didn't hey, how's well. everybody doing tonight? I thought like that would be a weak way of getting like that applause to say that. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Well, that's that's supposed to be a a negative that people are not supposed to say. How's everybody doing? What? But but I but I do it occasionally when you need it. Yeah, but you're a nice guy. Um, and Fritzy went blue right out of the I, gate. I, I, I heard the bleep word. Yeah. yeah. Use a crutch Where are it. these effing seats? <laughs> it is you got to punch it. Doesn't it feel you like gotta punch it. that's a crutch? Well, if, it, you, if you scramble a little bit. Sometimes that's when that word comes in. I mean, I don't work that way, but I, I know a lot of people. Have you ever? Do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I when I first started, I was I was not 100% clean when I started. I had some, uh, had some blue jokes, some dirty jokes. But it was always like, 5% of my act, so I, I, I took them out. Not because I wanted to be wholesome, because I'm anal. <laughs> I wanted to be 100% something. Speaking of anal, uh, here's another joke that Fritzy had. I didn't find out till recently from a friend of mine that if your mom is still taking your temperature rectally when you're in high school, it's a little past the time where that's acceptable. My little sister in the room with the extra sketch trying to make a drawing of it and everything, it's just really, really inappropriate. I, I can't look at Vaseline the, uh, the same way. And she, she didn't have any good aim, so you can imagine how uh, painful that was. <laughs> okay. 
Very visual. <laughs> <laughs> they say comedy is pictures, Gra so you're making some, <laughs> some very interesting pictures. But the crowd was into it a little bit. Yeah, well, crowds like crowds like when you get earthy and dirty get and low. Yeah, yeah, go low. All right. Any advice for Fritzy for the next stand up? Big stage, Los Angeles Sunset Strip, comedy store. You played the comedy store, I'm sure. Slow down. You're a little on the quick side. I get nervous and anxious, and it makes you start talking real quick. I, you got to draw them in, man. You dr it, the slow, it, don't go super slow, but you got to just slow it down, and the crowd will go. They'll lean forward. When you're when you're chasing them, they 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 pull back. And you worry. At least I, I have that. What you you worry that you're gonna forget what you're gonna say, or you're yeah, gonna forget you, the order of how you have it in your head. So that makes you talk faster too to make sure you get but, it out. But he doesn't write down his jokes. <laughs> And, and learn your own act. That's that's always that's an important component to comedy. That seems, that seems like a pretty significant <laughs> thing to be able to do. Learn your <laughs> act. Yeah. <laughs> Fritzy, you got to write it down. I had written some notes down, but then I didn't oh. bring it up with me onto the stage because I didn't want to like feel like I would be looking at index cards instead of making eye contact with you. Do you the, write down everything you say word for word? Oh. Uh, not at the ultimately. At, at first, it's an idea, and you have uh, you make, you give it a beginning, middle, and an end, and then I'll try it on stage. But I tape every show, and that way, while I'm on stage, sometimes, sometimes I think the best writing takes place when you're on stage, in the heat of the moment. You figure out a, a more concise way of getting to the point. Is there a go-to joke you have? When you need to, like when you know that maybe you, you, you've you gone over two. Um, I was joking with Dave because I do these corporate shows where sometimes, you know, the audience, they don't know who I am, you know. Um, in fact, they usually don't know who I am. <laughs> I'm so bad at selling myself. Um, <laughs> Come out and see me. Nobody knows Nobody me. Knows Brian I, Regan on tour. Well, I hate when I do a corporate event and they bring me out as a surprise guest. <laughs> I'm like, please, <laughs> please. Don't bring me out as a surprise, because the only surprise is going to be that we have no idea who this guy is, and we still don't know who he is. We've, you've worked all year to get to this great moment. Yes. You've award winners, <laughs> and as a big surprise. Big surprise. Here it is. Here he is. It's a guy you've never heard Brian of. Brian Regan. Yes. So I hit the stage, and they have no idea who I am. Um, and I, I used to do a bit years ago about dogs barking at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I never understood why they did that. And... The, my joke was, what if people were like that? And I do a guy yelling. But I know I'm having a bad show when I start you... barking on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I almost have an out-of-body experience. And I go, oh, oh. I'm like, oh, man, this show is going south. I'm barking. Once again, the guy you don't know is Brian Regan. Yeah. Yeah, come out and see him. Get to know him. <laughs> Uh, BrianRegan.com. You could also see him in his role of Muggsy, second season of Loudermilk on uh, Audience. That's Channel 239, Tuesdays at 10 Eastern and Pacific. It's always great when you stop by. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate uh, you joining us as always, Brian. Thank you so much. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.